Total joint replacement is one of the commonest surgical interventions. As the frequency of operations increases, so does the number of revision procedures, driving demand for longer lasting implants and a reduction in failure rates. The development of a new generation universal joint simulator by Simulation Solutions is a significant early achievement of the Lifelong Joints project. Nick Eldred is Managing Director of Simulation Solutions. These machines open up an avenue to drive a sort of new level of testing in terms of more significant adverse scenarios such as tripping, which uh, puts very significant loading through joints, um, running, plyometric leaping, i.e. someone jumping up the stairs two or three at a bound, um, scenarios which start to move towards a younger population. Historically, the ISO standards were really developed for older patients um, who they expected to maybe have a life of maybe sort of five to ten years post-operation, um, um, but now you're seeing that the life of those patients of 65 are extending out to 80, 85, so you're looking at 20 years there. And then you've got a, a group of younger patients coming through who may be in the 40s, who've been marathon runners, who basically the joints have shown quite a lot of wear, and they want to return to a sort of complete active lifestyle. A lot of the standards aren't really reflective of a sort of complete lifestyle. They're not uh, reflecting the activities of daily living, which is the popular phrase in the industry. Um, and also, you really need to try and get an understanding of not really how an implant performs in just a sort of relatively modest, undemanding environment. You're really interested in trying to identify under what circumstances will an implant fail. Asia presents a massive opportunity for all of the manufacturers. Um, currently, they assess the uh, Western market at approximately $20 billion per annum. But some of the figures show the potential of the Asian market by the time it's on stream in about 2050, based at around 80 to 100 billion per annum. So it dwarfs the Western market in terms of the actual scale of the opportunity. Potential markets and customers, uh, I see those sort of split two ways. Uh, geographically, there's the potential growth coming out of Asia, where this presents a great opportunity for them to do fairly advanced research work. Whilst at the same time, uh, you've got the existing markets in the West where they're looking for greater longevity out of implants, so different demands really. Asia is a growth market in terms of trying to really bring through local product, indigenous manufacture, and then at the same time servicing the West in terms of doing more advanced research to try and minimize the likelihood of yet another metal-on-metal -metal implant failure. We've put one simulator into uh, the National Korean Testing Laboratory who are using a beacon strategy to encourage other manufacturers and universities in Korea to use them. Uh, we've put another system into the Inner Mongolia Medical University who are adopting a similar strategy and we're currently working with four or five companies and testing institutions who are interested in adopting the technology as well. We've had a historical relationship with Leeds University. Um, Leeds University is an active part of the Lifelong Joints project. Um, we were, so we were keen to actually continue to foster that relationship with them and actually together work to push the boundaries a little further. We saw this as a good opportunity to possibly start to bring about a more holistic approach to trying to model different scenarios and have a more integrated um, sort of approach to testing um, with companies like anybody involved in the project as well that really presents that opportunity. If I look at the evolution of the business, um, every sort of five years or so there's a sort of fundamental step forward uh, and this was one of those step changes for us. Um, we effectively have sort of developed the next level up in terms of, sort of the electronics, in terms of software control. Um, we've basically really started to push things in terms of the mechanical envelope. And certainly from where I'm sitting, I can see that there are further opportunities for us to start to look at how we model the sort of software elements in terms of soft tissue analysis. If we were mechanically representing everything that we see in the body, you wouldn't be seeing failures of implants because we would have already modeled every scenario. But the fact is at the moment, I still think that there's a way to go in terms of actually replicating in vivo wear. For you as a taxpayer, it's good news because you can actually have a little more confidence that as a result of the equipment, the testing equipment that's been generated through this project, your implant will have been really tested to the, the limits.